Now for the radio program that has rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program. The mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. And I'll tell you why. It's because you know who's guilty. You see his every move. You know his complete plan, even his innermost thought. Yet the final curtain always brings a startling surprise. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. I am the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's The Whistler for the Thompson Entertainment. And now The Whistler's strange story, Creole of Rogue. Ten years, she had been Mark Hartwick's private secretary. Standing now on the wings of the small town auditorium, Miriam Wells could close her eyes and still see every expression, every gesture made by the speaker on the stage. She could put her hands over her ears, still know every word and how he said it in that booming, driving voice that somehow managed to hypnotize you people at the polls. By your great power of vote, you send me to your state assembly. I say it here now. Then I shall not let you down. Because I know and believe that the smallest city helps to make the greatest state. I intend to cut through and terrorize the confusion and the red tape. Pinpoint the problems right down to the needs of places like this. You're smiling, Miriam Wells, and, and, and hurried to one of the backstage dressing rooms where Joe Crane, Hardwick's campaign manager, sat pecking away at a typewriter. Well, don't tell me you're writing a new speech. I'm uh, just brushing up the old one for the next time. Oh. Hey, how do you spell prestidigitation? Oh, now, really, Joe? P R E S T I D I G. Ah, never mind, never mind. What's the big boy doing? He has an eating out of his hands. What else? Uh, you know something, baby? He's going to make it. Come election time, he's going to make it. Give me a cigarette, will you, Joe? Sure, here you are. Thanks. Yes, sir. And this is only the beginning. In a few more years, our Mr. Hartley... Uh, yes, you... Joe. Yeah, yeah. You were saying? I'll let you in on something, sweetheart. Mark got a phone call this morning from Judge Cantrell. The old gent's been quite impressed with our tour. Seems he's been interested in Mark for some time, too. Judge Cantrell. Hmm. You know how Mark stacks up with the voters. They love him. There isn't a cleaner record in the state. Mm-hmm. And if the judge backs him, who knows? Our Mark may wind up in the governor's mansion in another five years. Right. That's why this election's important. If Mark makes it, he's on his way. Nothing will stop him. Mm, how nice. How very nice. What are you grinning about? Oh, nothing. I was just thinking how well things had turned out for Mark. And, well, for us too, Joe. Mm -hmm. I've been looking forward to this moment for a long time, Joe. A very long time. Mark's career means a lot to me. Joe doesn't really understand, does he, Millie? But he will before long. Yes, you do want Mark to succeed, don't you? Because you know that when he does, you'll be able to turn his power to your advantage. That's why you've waited patiently. Waited for the right moment to start your plan into action. Now that moment is close at hand. And when at last the tour is over and you've returned to the home office, every day brings the promise that it's going to be worthwhile. Well, Joe, Miriam, we've got him. Yes, sir, I'd say we're in. <laughs> I could 
should have told you that before you started yeah, the ceremony. It was costly, but effective. Very effective. You've done a grand job for me, kids. I want you to know I appreciate it, and I won't forget it. Okay. When you get to be governor, can I have a deputy sheriff's badge? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see, Joe. We'll see. Oh, uh, by the way, is the guard send my car around? Uh-huh. And uh, here's your copy of the speech for the group luncheon. I've uh, hopped it up a little. Good, good. Sprinkle yeah. a few jokes here and there. Always goes over big with the boys, you know. Well, I'd better be on my way. Oh, uh, Miriam. We're donating $1,000 to the Boys League. It's the judge's idea. I'll get the check right out. Hey, will someone come around to pick it up? Maybe we can work out a little ceremony of some kind. I'll get picked no, up. No, 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 no. I'll make it the simple treatment. Uh, mail it to him, Miriam. All right, Mark. Well, see you later. And Joe. Yeah? If those gags of yours lay an egg, you'll hear from me. <laughs> what a guy. I'm loads a thousand bucks just like that. Joe. Huh? Mark must have an awful lot of money. Take that wall safe over there. You think it's close to 100000 in that? <laughs> You've been peeking over his shoulder whenever he opens the safe. I don't have to. He uh, got a little overexcited one day a long time ago when I first came here to work. He was sort of careless. I, uh, I got the combination. Oh? Uh-huh. Want to look at all that money, Joe? What good would it do? Money fascinates me, Joe. I like to look at it. Come on. Hey, look, uh, suppose he comes back in. Whoa, stop worrying. <laughs> oh, those beautiful little packages. Five, ten, twenty grand. Oh, no, no, no. Put it away, put it away. I can't stand and it. And stock, bonds. Some look very negotiable. Very. Close the safe, sweetheart. You're drooling. Wait a minute. Here. Take a look at this. Hmm. Newspaper clipping. Read it. Smithtown, Texas, July 15th, 1924. Menor prospector murdered by partners. Go on, Joe. Keep reading. Harry Moore, a local prospector, was found late yesterday at a campsite where he and his partners had been working a claim. Before he died, Moore told Sheriff Gannon that his partners, James Murdoch and Martin Henderson, quarreled with him over distribution of profits, attacked him with a large wrench, then left him to die. The pair fled with the entire proceeds from the sale of the mineral rights. Sheriff Gannon issued a statewide alarm describing both men as over six feet in height and weighing close... Miriam, what is this? Joe, listen to me. To keep this clipping all these years... Wouldn't Mark have a personal interest? What are you driving at? Martin Henderson? Mark Hardwick. At the picture? What is it they say about people usually using the same initials when they pick an alien? I don't know. Wait a minute. It could be, Joe. Could be. I've had a lot of time to think it over. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Now put this stuff back in the safe, huh? You want me to lock it up? Forget about this? What else? <laughs> All right, Joe. I'll lock the safe. But you know I won't forget about it. And I don't think you want me to. Do you, Joe? With the prologue of Trio of Rogues, full of a strange story by The Whistler. And now, back to The Whistler. Forget your discovery in the safe at the office. It's much too close to what you've been waiting for, isn't it? That old newspaper clipping that Mark has kept so carefully to himself. It holds the story of a murder, doesn't it, Mary? And possibly the key to how you can take Mark's money away from him. It's only a day or two later that you take the first step, a bombshell drops gently with the hope that it will explode. Well, how did it work, are we? Yeah. He's going over some figures on the campaign fund, Mark. How'd you talk with the judge come out? Oh, fine, fine. Oh, Mark. Yes, what is it, Miriam? There was someone here this morning to see you. <laughs> well, is that so unusual? Well, I thought so. He was a, oh, tramp, sort of, and he claimed to be an old friend. 
said he knew you someplace in East Texas. Uh, Smith Town. Smith Town. Yes. Have you been there, Matt? Well, what did that man look like? Oh, about your height. Thinner. He had that saggy look like he moved been much heavier at one time. Uh, did he... Did he say he was coming back? No, but he did say you'd hear from him. That's why I mentioned it. He, uh... Oh, he somehow gave me the impression he wasn't going to be easy to brush out. Oh, I remember something else. He said he'd been a partner of a man named, uh... Moore. Moore, that was it. He said that would mean something to you. Does it? If, uh... you hear from him again, Miriam, I want to see him. Don't let him get away if I'm out. You got that? Oh, then you do remember him. Well, maybe, I don't know, but... Any man who claims, well, he may be an old friend. He need help or something. Oh, sure, maybe that's it. Say, it would make good human interest material for Joe. No. no nothing on this, you understand? Joe. Yeah? Hear this? It's one to steer clear of. Keep it away from the press. I'll handle it. Don't worry. See that I don't have to. What are you trying to pull? There wasn't any tramp in here looking for him. <laughs> no, there wasn't. But he fell, Joe. Hooked, line, and sinking. Okay, okay, so he fell. You've got him thinking his old pal Murdoch showing up. What happens now? It's our chance for better things. You see, Murdoch could turn out to be a very greedy man. Ah, uh, blackmail. Is that the word? Oh, you can say it prettier, Joe. You're good with words. Uh, coming in with me? The champagne's fine. You're crazy. Mm, all those piles of bills, Joe. Thousand dollar ones, lots of them. Think of it, Joe. Think of it. We could work out a nice little deal for ourselves for years and years. Read it back to me, Joe. Worried about this. I can sometimes trace printing. Oh, he won't show it to the police. Read it. Okay. Imagine how surprised I was when passing through town to see your face looking out at me. So now you're Mark Hartwick. Respectable and rich. Well, Mark, I'm sure for old times' sake you'd let an old partner have a few bucks so he can move on and not disturb your new life. A hundred thousand would set me up fine, so I'll get in touch with you real soon. I call myself John Singer now. You'll know who it is when I sign that name. Sincerely, your old friend, John Singer. Sounds good, Joe. Nice. Like fine music. Oh, you have a rare gift. Uh, sure. Now what? We know it. Then we just sit back and wait. The screen you'll hear will be Mark Hartwick. Want me to get it, Joe? No, I'll take it. Suppose you finish mixing the drinks, huh? Okay. Say hello. Joe, oh, this is Mark. Oh, yeah. Well, what's that, Mark? Uh, you remember Miriam mentioning some fellow was in to see me last week? Uh, claimed he knew me years back? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, uh... I got a letter from him. He needs my help, badly. But he didn't mention why I get in touch with him. Oh? Uh -huh. Well, that's fine. Why doesn't he um, come around to the office? Oh, I, I don't know. He may be sick or something. I've got to find him, Joe. He's a he's an old uh, friend, if you understand. Yeah, sure, sure. But uh, what do you want? I want you to attend to it, Joe. Hire a private detective if you have to. Just get me John Singer. Singer. That's his name? Yeah, that's the name he's going by. Now, I don't care how much it costs, Joe. Find him for me. And find him in a hurry. Okay. I'll get right to work on it. All right. There'll be a nice bonus in it for you, Joe. Uh, thanks. Um, of course, uh, Miriam will have that. I, I won't forget her, either. I'm sure you won't, Mark. Good night, Joe. <laughs> well, what do you have to say? He wants me to hire a private eye to find John Singer. <sighs> Here's a drink, Joe. Thanks. No expenses spared. The boss is very anxious to help uh, his old pal. What do you think of my idea now? Time will tell, sweetheart. Time will tell. A week ought to do it, Joe. I think our pigeon will be ready for us by then. Hiya, sweetheart. 
Lockport. Mark's been pacing up and down that office like a caged dinosaur for the past three hours. Where's he been? I told you I had to check the details of the parade for tomorrow night. The parade? Oh, yes. Well, all right. You'd better go in and see him. Oh, look, sweetheart, can't I tell him I found Singer? No. But he's driving me nuts. He's hounding me day and night. Where's Singer? Where's Singer? I said no. The time's not right. But just a sec. Yes, Mark. Has Joe come in yet? Just a minute, Mark. I'll send him in. And uh, you come in, too, Miriam. I want to talk to the both of you. Oh, all right, Mark. What do you suppose that means? Well, he probably wants to chew on our fingernails. His arm must be all gone by now. Come on. Come in. Come in. Look, Mark, uh, about Singer, I said. All right, Joe. All right. Uh, uh, sit down. Sit down, both of you. Sure. Sure, Mark. Uh, Joe, Miriam, you've been with me a long time. Now, I... Wait a minute. This isn't the act. No, no, no. Nothing like that. On the contrary, I need you now more than ever before. It's about Singer. I know I can trust you, and I'm going to let you in on something. What's the trouble, Mark? Yeah. Here, read this letter. I got it several days ago from Singer. Let me see, Miriam. Blackmail, that's what it is, blackmail. It's going to give me a few more days to make up my mind. A hundred thousand bucks. Yeah. Mark, why don't you take this to the police? No. No, I uh, can't take this to the police. That's the worst of it. There was a little fight down in Texas years ago. A man was killed. It was self-defense, mind you. Self-defense, only I can't prove it. Sarah will ruin me, Joe. You can see now how important it is that we find him. But, Mark, there's only one way to deal with this sort of thing, and that's to go to the police. Unless... Unless you've decided to stay. Yeah, the police in this town hate my guts. And you've decided to pay off? Joe, there's only one way to stop a blackmailer. And it isn't by crawling with the police or paying him off. What? You've got to kill him. Wipe him out like you'd squash a chinch buck. That's something you hadn't expected, is it, Miriam? Mark doesn't want to pay. He wants to kill. And that doesn't fit in with your plan at all. You have to retreat now. Revise your strategy. You wouldn't want to let Joe know you're a little rattled. So you're happy with the chance to think alone. By mid-afternoon, you know what your next move must be. Impatiently, you wait for Joe and Mark to return from the league luncheon. Shortly after four, the office door opens. Oh, Joe, I've been waiting. Howdy. Oh, hello. What can I do for you? Well, I just dropped in to see if Mark Hartwick was around. Oh, he's not. I'm sorry. You expect him back, do you? You really don't know. Can I help you? Well, no. Just see him, personal. Oh, well, if you leave your name, I'll tell him you called. Any chance of him coming back tonight? I doubt it. He's scheduled to meet the parade at 7th Street. At... Parade, huh? Well, I'll drop around later, just in case. But he may not be able to see you. If you'll give me a... He'll uh, see me, ma'am. He'll see me. What makes you so sure? Mr. Harper's the biggest busy man. Just leave your name. My name don't matter. Just want to talk to you. Well, I'm his private secretary. Anything you have to say to him, you can say to me. Uh, well, maybe. Maybe not. I'll be around later. Bye, ma'am. Well, that makes everything dandy, doesn't it? Yeah. So you had company, so I came in the side door. Well, what happens to our plans now? All right. I'm not worried. Even after talking to Murdoch? Murdoch? Yeah, the man we called Singer in our note. Look, you know and I know that Texas boy didn't show up for no reason at all. It has to be Murdoch. There were three of them. Murdoch, Henderson, Moore. Moore's dead. Martin Henderson's our own Mark Hartwick. That leaves Murdoch. You know that as well as I do. And if he talks to Mark... We've got to get to Mark first. Before Murdoch gets around to seeing Mark... We'll be out on the highway headed for Paris Unknown. Look, as long as we have the skip, why bother going over to see Mark? The door is in the office safe. You know the combination. It isn't here. Mark took the money home with him last night. We'll have to go out there and get it. But the be... plan stands. We're going out to Mark's house. All that's changed is that now we won't be lying when we tell him we found the man called Singer. <laughs> Joe, my boy, 
Well, you found him. You found Singer. Yeah, that's right. A couple hours ago on a lead from the detective. Agent. Where is he? Where is that dirty Now, Mark? wait a minute, Mark. You just can't go out and shoot him. You know a better way? Well, be smart. After all, a man in your position, you can't take any chances, get involved in a thing like that. Well, Joe means... Uh, we've thought of another angle. Yeah, what's that? Joe has already contacted Singer, arranged to meet him tonight at a quiet little spot outside of town for the payoff. Payoff? I told you I don't... It won't to... be the kind of a payoff that Singer expects. You see, Joe's not going to keep the appointment. He's hired someone to take his place. Someone who'll get rid of Singer for you. You, you hired a gunman, Joe? Oh, I, uh, I told him I'd let him know. Was well, that smart? Don't worry. He's not a town boy. He'll blow as soon as the job's over. You won't be involved in any way. Leave it to Joe. He'll handle the payoff. Everything, Mark. Uh, how, uh, how much? Uh, Fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. Uh, nothing small time about this boy. That's only half of what Singer wants. And besides, he'd be coming back for more. This way, Mark. Fifty grand... You're in the clear. You won't ever have to worry about Murdoch bothering you again. No. No, I won't, will I? All right. I'll get the money, Joe. Just a second. Oh, I didn't think it would be this easy. No, neither did I. I'd sure like to be around to see Mark's face when Murdoch shows up. Well, you can stay if you want, but baby is traveling. I hope he makes it in small bills. I don't like to handle it. What's the matter? Mark. What's the idea to the gun? Don't you know? Is this a gun? Put it away, Mark. Tell me more about Singer, or as you just called him, Murdoch. You uh, talked to him, did you? Well, sure. Sure, I talked to Murdoch. I, I made arrangements. You're lying. You found that news clip in my safe, didn't you? I made up this whole blasted story so you could shake me down. You and Miriam wrote that letter, didn't you? There was never anyone putting a bite on me. Listen, Mark, you got it all wrong. I was talking to Murdoch a couple of hours That's ago. That's right, Mark. No, no, it isn't, Miriam. You see, I'm Murdoch. Ooh. Yeah. You picked me for Martin Henderson because of the initials, didn't you? Well, you guessed wrong, friend. Mark, you got to believe me. A guy came around to the office asking for you. If you're Murdoch, then he must be Henderson. And you still need... Oh, Joe, I'll bite once, but not twice. I can prove it, Mark. You left not to know. I have a... Uh, don't do that, Miriam. Just toss that purse to me, hmm? Uh, all right, Mark. Here. Uh, 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 I've got the gun, Joe. Okay. okay, come on. Let's get out of here. Wait a minute. What for? Darling, there's an awful lot of money in this house, and Baby is not leaving without it. Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. And now, back to the Whistler. And so the plan that was set into motion was the discovery of a newspaper clipping, linking your boss, Mark Hartwick, with a murder some 24 years ago, has finally paid off, hasn't it, Miriam? A plan that only a short while ago seemed doomed to failure as Mark faced you with a gun in his hand. After he found out you and Joe Crane had been behind the blackmail scheme. Things, things had looked dark indeed at that moment. And then Joe had changed it all with his fit. Half an hour after you leave the unconscious Mark Hartwick on the library floor of his home, you're driving across town with Joe and $75,000 from Hartwick's safe tucked away in your coat pocket. Don't look so long, Joe. It's all over. Yeah, sure, sure. You're a rich man now. I was pretty near a dead one now. Joe, can't you take a shortcut to the highway? There's an awful lot of traffic around here. I'll well, turn off at the next corner. Joe. What? Up ahead is... Joe, it's a cop. He's waiting us into the curb. Turn around quick. Oh, I can't do that. I'll have to pull over. Wait a minute. What's the matter, Yeah, the parade for Mark. Oh, no. What do we do now? I don't know. I... Hey, look. I'm going to call a cop over and tell him I'm Mark's campaign manager. Maybe he'll let us through. Officer! Officer! Yeah? Over here. Where? It's Joe. I was hoping I'd get this with you two. Right, nice of you to call the officer over. 
Sure, I planned on his help. Henderson. Henderson? <laughs> no, we got him a long time ago. The name's Blake, Brazos County, Texas. Deputy Sheriff. Mind if I sit in with you? Hey, now, wait a minute. Just picked up your boss, Mark Hartwick, on a 24-year-old murder charge. Send him over to the local officers. <laughs> he sure is riled at you two. Says you stole some money of his that he got in Texas. Yes, yeah, sir. So mad he didn't care much about his own arrest as long as I got you two. <laughs> well, this is a right nice parade here. Yes, sir. Right nice. Your idea, Joe? Thank you.